Today I'll be talking about a question, a question which many many people think about, but not many people talk about. It's 100 years from now, who will remember you? You see, this question had come up in my mind a year ago, to be precise, when my grandmother had passed away. She was very close to me, and she had taught me things which not many people know, such as stitching of shoes, porcelain doll making, and so on. But you see, when she had passed away, over thousands of people from the land of Martinique had gathered in a funeral in the church. And there was I, sitting in the front row, at a casket in front. And then this question came, in, came up in my mind. Charles, when you are going to pass away, who will remember you? When your face is erased from this world, who will remember you? And this question led me for hours and hours of contemplation. And from that one question, I finally got three answers, which are three more questions. And from those three questions, I finally got an answer. And I'm here to present my research. So we're going to be starting off uh, with an example. On my right-hand side, I have Agatha Christie. And on my left-hand side, I have Ted Bundy. So on Agatha Christie, she's known for her books, her novels. People do book reviews on her books. And there's even movies on it. But on my left-hand side, Ted Bundy. He's famous, but not for the things he has done. He is known for kidnapping, torturing, and killing his victims in vile ways. Now you see, I may be using both of them in two ends of the spectrum, but they have one thing in common, and that is they have left an impact. An impact so strong that people still talk about the things they have done to this very day. So my first question was, how can one leave a lasting legacy that can be remembered for a hundred years? And the answer is actually quite simple. You see, we humans are social beings. We live in a social planet. When we want something, we use communication. When we don't want something, we use, again, communication. But as day and age is progressing and technology is evolving, the word social from social being is slowly fading away and is being replaced with the word egoistic. But now, how do we eliminate that word egoistic from social being? And the answer is, once again, very simple. Leave your comfort zone. Seems simple, am I right? Once you're able to leave your comfort zone, go down with the people and help people and discover people, make connections, go for charity and help those in need, this will leave an impact on them. This may seem little to nothing to you, but it will mean surely something towards them. Now, my second question was, which individuals or relationships will be helpful for me to be remembered for a hundred years? And the answer is, once again, very simple. You see, each of us live in a community. Each of, and the community ranges from our parents, to our co-workers, to our classmates, to our friends. And you see, this community alone, that this community will help you for, to be remembered for 100 years because they will pass it on to, to, to people around them. But now you see, I may be saying all of these things, but what are the factors? What are the ways to be remembered for 100 years? Are there any steps? And yes, there are factors to it. So the first thing is lasting impression. The impression that you aim to leave on that person should be so strong that it should last for millennia. I'll be using an example of my English teacher. You see, when I was in first grade, I had no idea of the concept of English. Heck, even the language itself. And teachers were hesitant to pick me and, and teach me English. And out of the entire crowd, only one person stood up saying, I will take in that child and teach him English. And now you see, she had left an impact on me so strong that I help people to those who need in verbal English. Hats off to her, honestly. Now, the second one is a source of inspiration. And what, what I mean by source of inspiration is that you should become a source of inspiration for those around you. You should become that ideal person. And once you attain that source of, that level of inspiration, people start saying things like, oh, he's such an inspirational person. Oh, he had inspired me to do this. Or, oh, He's such an inspirational person. Why don't you go meet him? And eventually, people will start following your footpaths and try to become just like you. And you will eventually form a community of own. Then the third one, values and actions. And when I say values and actions, I don't mean, oh, be good, or don't do this, or don't do that. No. What I mean is your, your values and your actions should coincide with the people you're going to be working for. I will be using another example here. Let's take the example of Mahatma Gandhi. His... This, the values that he stood for was to get something that he wants without the use of violence. 
which is ahimsa, non-violence. And the people who he worked for agree with the idea. And they were like, why don't we try it? And eventually they got things that they wanted without the use of violence. And the rest is history. Now you see, his values and his actions coincided with the people he worked for. Because if your values and your actions don't coincide at all, then it will be even tough to just cooperate with them. Then, the fourth one, which is a very crucial one, which is capacity of growth. And what do I mean by capacity of growth? Hear this. So three things which I said prior, which was lasting impression, values and actions, and source of inspiration, those three things should be strong enough that it should stand on its own because that will act, enact as your foundation. And how is this going to work? Well, when you are going to leave an impact on a person, that person will pass it on to the next person. And it will be like a passing game of sorts. And eventually, it will form a legacy of your own. But if your foundation is not strong enough, then it will crumble like that of a building. And we do not want that, do we? And last one, but not the least, is a shared quest or more like a shared goal. You, your, you should have a goal for your legacy and your goal should be different from anyone else because when you have a different goal from everyone else that stands out, people will, will, will be amazed and they will want to follow it. You see, your goal is like that of a destination and your legacy is like a ship. If the ship doesn't have any destination of its own and goes either and thither, eventually it will sink. Now, I may be saying all of these things once again, but who are the people I'm going to be working for? Which is the community that I'll be aiming to leave an impact on them? And the answer is none other than this generation and the upcoming generation. So my third and final question was, how can our generation make a meaningful impact on today's society or today's youth, one could say? So the first one is through mentorship and guidance. By helping youngsters into starting out their careers or their personal lives, that will help them a lot. It will leave a huge impact on them. And not just that, by guiding them to what was right and what is wrong and advocating the reason behind it, that will help them also. Because they will know the reason of why, why you're doing this. They'll know the reason of why not, why they should not do it. Then, the second one is support for youth causes. Support for youth causes such as climate change, social injustice, mental health, mental health. And I'm just saying a few, but there's even a more, a lot more. There's even a plethora of it. You see, these youth causes will impact the earth and make the earth a better place. And it'll make the earth a better place, not just for them, but for us also. So it'll be a win-win situation of sort. Then the third and the final one was positive values. Instill positive values on the upcoming generation so they can live a better society because they will pass it on to the next generation. And yes, it may take time and consistency and a lot of pain, but the results are formidable. So now my final approach to all of this is that at the end of the day, it all boils down to your first impression and your actions because your life consists of 10% of how you enact and 90% of how you react. But that 10% of how you enact is so crucial that that decides on how 90% you enact. Because that 10% will leave an impact on that person. And how? Through your first impression. And your first impression, such as your, your body expression, your, your body language, the way how you speak, and what you speak. Because those factors will be the deciding factor if you want to be remembered for 100 years or not.